Then we have got Portland, Oregon's AEW show on Wednesday. You're really stressing the Portland, Oregon part of this. Why? I, don't, I you, wasn't. Yeah. It's in Portland, Oregon. You've I said mean, it, it like it should do all right. A lot of local bias there, apparently, you're showing. Portland, Oregon's or- AEW Oregon is not place. anywhere near where I'm at. I know you East Coasters think that I live in Oregon, mm. but I don't. I live in Washington. I live way up in Washington, by you the way. You don't rep Billy Jack Haynes. Th- three and a half hours if I wanted to drive from here to Portland, Oregon. You only go there for vacation. Well, That's yeah, because I'm going to be there for days, and I have a place to stay. I'm not gonna. I'm not just going to drive down and back. That's hard. Plus, I'd have to come back and do a show with Dave. Well, yeah, yeah, it's understandable. We've got MJF versus Daniel Garcia for the AW title. Samoa Joe versus Keith Lee for the Ring of Honor TV title. Jay White versus Mark Briscoe. Ooh. We've got Swerve Strickland versus Penta. And Red Velvet versus Julia Hart. You know who better you know who better show up on this show Wednesday? This hangman. Is it the police? Where arrest- is this guy? Where is <laughs> I mean, there really needs to be better explanation about all of this. Why is Prince Nana and Swerve Strickland? Why are they around and allowed to run wild? I wanna know, honestly, seriously here, because you had to have uh, what's his name from uh, the Alex Abrahantes had to come to the defense of Hangman Page. I got a question. If he loves his family so much, why was there no baby monitor in the crib? And why was nobody at the house to hear the baby monitor as Swerve was cutting this promo? Again, there was way too Brother, much Brother, that's nonsense. the least of our problems. That's, that's the, the least of our... Yeah, the least of our problems is after the guy did it, Hangman apparently has been... Getting an oil change, shopping at Target, uh, eating at Applebee's. Like, whatever the guy's doing, what he's not doing is going to the shows. I'm not and saying on, he should have pulled on. Cain Velasquez here, but he on should be Saturday, doing something, something. On Saturday, on Saturday, this this swerve wrestled in the opener, and the obvious question is, why did Hangman not show up and kill this guy? And you know what? Yeah. These, these hardcore AEW defenders responded to me. They go, well, he was in the building. Why not? Exactly. That's a, not a defense. Why wasn't he in the building? This guy got his house broken into, mm-hmm. and the guy was in the house apparently with his sleeping wife, mm-hmm. and we know the sleeping baby because the guy cut mm-hmm. a promo on the baby and dropped a, a shirt into the thing. Well, so, well, you know, I I, uh, I go beat his ass, wife, but uh, I'm not booked for the show. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I'll, right. I'll hang out here. Next time I'm booked, though, man, I'll get him. Come Let on. Let me tell you. For t- old TK there, I know he he watched the WCW, loves the lethal lottery and the like, and likes having people around from the era of Tony Schiavone and Dusty Rhodes being booked and booking Jim Crockett promotions. Remember some of the things that they would do with just a camera, gorilla that somebody would do, and they would tie it into the show somehow. Why is this being shown? Because J.J. Dillon put the money up. That's Some of those things are a lot simpler. And the fact that Hangman Page could be doing something to this man and should be doing something to this man, and we should see him trying to get some revenge on this psychopath who just apparently goes house to house when he feels like it and commits felonies. Well, you you want to know why? You want to know why he does that, Mike? Because there's no consequences. Yeah. He, He went to Nick Wayne's house. He assaulted him. He accosted him with a picture of Buddy Wayne, bloodied him up. Brian? And there were no consequences. Therefore, well, he thought, the, the well, you know, I'm going to break into the hangman's house, yeah, and I'm yeah, going that's... to uh, I'm going to talk to his child, and uh, there were no consequences. Problem Not even is... hangman. Hangman didn't Pro... even get mad. But you had to come up with that, and that makes sense. At How about Nick having Wayne some got of mad. that explained on the air? You know what? When you're on AEW property, you never know what could happen, and we take, you know, I don't know. There's got to be a better explanation to try to weave this into reality. When you do other things based in reality on the show and play off of reality, you have something that's so over the top that's just, again, it's just doing the small little detail work to try to make it, even if it's completely ridiculous, everything in professional wrestling is completely ridiculous. You have to do a better job sewing up the loose ends around this story. It's crazy to me. It really is from a guy who came on TV for a real life situation with CM Punk that I'm sure a lot of his audience actually, I'm sure some people didn't know about it. I'm sure a lot of them did. Most of them probably did, but 
I was scared for my life because something happened here. And then you have just Swerve running around again in storyline, committing felony after felony and nothing happens. And they just move on to something else or people don't feel they're not looking. There's not even a camera shot of people looking at Swerve and Nana like you even showed up here tonight. Like we can't do anything about it because we'll get sued or something, but like or get fired. But like you sh you're disgusting, like something to, to play more into it. And Again, Hangman Page loses a lot in this as a father who's not losing his ever-loving mind trying to get revenge on this bastard for breaking into his house. All right. We also got Red Velvet and Julia Hart. Red Velvet's first match in a year. She will come back and be destroyed by Julia Hart, I presume, here. I'd bring her back to win, but not Julia Hart. She should not be beating Julia Hart. But uh, that's the show for Wednesday. We'll talk about New Japan after the break. Observer Live. Will Ospreay and Shooter this weekend. 40 minutes. Match was awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I would say that it was the match of the year. A lot of people said it was their match of the year. I don't know if I would say that. Of course, I don't know what I would say the match of the year was. But, uh, I mean, hey, listen, it was a great match. It was a great match. It was awesome. And, uh, of course, Will Ospreay won. And then uh, afterwards, old John Moxley's out there. And Osprey challenges him to get into the ring. And they have this stare down. They're going to set up a match at the Tokyo Dome. And uh, everyone's all buzzing and they're getting all excited about what's going on. And then uh, all of a sudden, they are both attacked by David Finley and his shillelagh. And he lays them both out. And behind him is Ghetto with a sledgehammer. A big, giant, black sledgehammer. Much like the one that The Fiend used in that Hell in a Cell match. Well. It was. Not that big. No, it was. Not that yes, big. Yes, it was as big as that. It just didn't have polka dots on it. Black is slimming, Mike. It was just as big. <laughs> Fair enough. And he took that black sledgehammer and he destroyed both of the title belts. And so, at the Tokyo Dome, Wrestle Kingdom 18, January 4th, it will be Will Ospreay, John Moxley, and David Finley for some new belt. Uh. Is the Intercontinental title returning? Oh. Is it going to be the All Pacific title? No. I don't what are they going to call it? I don't know, but it is a three way. And with uh, obviously John Moxley uh, heading to, uh, well, he's in AW, and Will Ospreay. Heading who knows where, probably in February. Well, probably David Finley is going to end up winning that match. And then, of course, the question is, well, where is uh, where is Will Ospreay going? And the answer currently is that we don't know. But he has made it abundantly clear he's looking to make a million dollars or more for this next contract. Mm. And that, uh, you know, not a lot of options there. WWE... Or AEW. And I realize that there there is, uh, you can look at the chat and online and everything like that. And, you know, there's a lot of people that they still don't want to hear anything about WWE. But the fact of the matter is, do not think for one second that WWE is out of the question here. WWE is very much in the running. AEW is, is in the running. And, uh... You know, things have changed in wrestling. And, you know, a lot of people are no longer looking at WWE as, why would anyone ever go there? This is, this, the, 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 uh, the what would the word be? Uh, the reputation of WWE over the last year has very much changed with a lot of people. The optics have changed. The optics have changed with a lot of people. I mean, it's it's already going here in the chat. Will Ospreay will never go to WWE. WWE, worst mm -hmm. wrestling experience. I mean, you guys can think whatever you want, okay? But I'm just telling you right now that maybe you should at least think that this is a possibility so that perhaps you will not be disappointed. Well, I'll pluck Convoy's comment out of there just because it'll drive him nuts that I'm, I'm tell, you know, talking about him on the show. But he says he's not just about the money. And I would say this about Will Ospreay and Julia if ultimately both of them wind up in WWE, and I don't know that Osprey would. I still think Osprey is a better fit for AEW, but let's just pretend he signs there. 
it's not just about the money. It's not just about the money for a Julio who would probably have to do what Dragon Lee did and go to NXT first, figure out exactly where you're at there. Osprey probably, no, in fact, absolutely would not have to do that. He would go to the main roster like AJ Styles did when he got there. And I think for a guy like Osprey, it's not just about the money. It is about the art, too. But I believe he could be convinced, and I believe that he could convince himself that he could do that artwork in WWE and have maybe not the length of the matches that he has, but the intensity of them, you know, and with the WWE background, you know, and what they can do, whether you like it or not, to blow something up into a major deal. I'm sure he looks at Cody or Roman and goes, I can hang with those guys or I'm better than those guys. Why not take this shot if I'm going to be moving to America anyway? And I'm willing to do that now. And he, look, it makes a lot of sense. And I think in both of those cases, I don't think it is just going to be about the money because he's going to get money from whoever it is. You know, it's just a matter of, again, where he feels comfortable and who's got the better job of selling those folks on why you should sign with us as opposed to the other. Well, I think that the the thing that everyone also needs to look at is there was a there was a point where Dragon Lee had to make a decision. And you're going to tell me that Dragon Lee does not care about going in there and and having the best matches possible. And you know, everyone was like don't go to WWE, don't go to NXT, go to AEW. And he made the decision that he was going to go to NXT. Because he believed that if I go to NXT, I'll be here for a year, and then I'm going to be up on the main roster, I'm going to make main roster money, and I can I can be a star there. And, you know, I heard it. He'll never be a star on the main roster. He'll never get out of NXT the whole nine yards. Well, he is now on the main roster with a main roster contract. And, you know, there were a lot of comparisons. You know, who's going to end up, who's going to end up doing better? Bandito going to AEW or Dragon Lee going to NXT? Everybody, everybody said that Bandito was going to do better going to AEW. And here we are, and uh, quite frankly, Dragon Lee is doing significantly better having gone to WWE than Bandito is doing having gone to AEW. Now, that's one, that's two guys, okay? Well, and there's an asterisk that needs to be put on that with Bandito because he has been injured. There are visa issues, I believe. There are other things that at play there, but take some of the he other... He has been, but he but was there the before all that happened. Then. But that's... And the thing is, if you take anybody else who is from Mexico on the AEW roster... I mean, it could apply there, even though it's Bandito, like put it up where Dragon Lee is right now and how they're positioning him again. And that could all get blown up rather quickly. But for right now, where he's at in comparison to some of these other guys, you know, uh, to me, it's no question. We'll see what happens with Andrade and Roosh um, because they're the, you know, they're they're great players. But for as far as the commanders go and folks like that, I mean, there's no question who's in a better position. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.